Hi, uh, so my name is Lucy Patterson. I'm one of the co-organisers of um, an annual volunteer-run hackathon in Berlin called Science Hack Day. And um, how would you define citizen science in one sentence? Well, I would say that citizen science is um, the civil society version of science. It's regular people, including scientists who don't work inside the academic system, carrying out science for their own purposes. Or it could also be the same regular people working together with science um, to provide expertise, different societal perspectives, or to hold science to account. Um, and in three words I'd say, three or so words I'd say, it's about self-empowerment, it's about the knowledge society, and it's about openness and accountability. So for an example of citizen science uh, that comes to my mind, well, I'm a big fan of Public Lab's DIY environmental monitoring, but since we're here to talk about DIY bio, DIY bio then um, I would talk about um, artist biohacker Mary Tsang, Mary Magic, and her open source estrogen project. Um, so in collaboration with different biohacking and bio art communities around the world, she's been developing this, um, it's a gender hacking project that's kind of part real, part speculative, um, social resistance and consciousness raising um, project that's criticizing how institutions and scientific fields are defining gender through biology, um, touting hormones as the biological determinants of sexual identities. And her work is performative but very hands-on and um, she runs a lot of workshops. Um, she's explored different experimental strategies for um, DIY extraction of hormones from different things, from like urine, from waste or polluted environmental sources. Um, and she's also created a ge genetically engineered yeast biosensor um, to detect trace estrogen in water systems. Um, the third question, how would you define do-it-yourself biology in one sentence? So, um, DIY bio is doing biology-related projects outside of an institution by yourself or with others, out of interest to learn, to prove that it's possible and for the joy of hacking, or for personal or artistic expression, or to respond to societal or civic challenges that are not otherwise being solved. And in three words, I would say similar to citizen science, it's about um, independence and self-empowerment, it's about counterculture, and it's also simply about the joy of hacking, learning and discovery. So what would be the three main issues that you see in the theme of building bridges between citizens and institutions? Well, this is quite a difficult question. Um, and I think I could break it down into three main issues. So the first issue would be why should grassroots and institutions work together? So, first of all, grassroots don't necessarily want to work with institutions. Um, there are a lot of DIY scientists out there who are choosing to work independently in order to avoid institutions. So maybe it's the culture of publish or perish, it's the lack of diversity inside institutions, it's um, lack of opportunities for young scientists, um, and they'd rather work independently. But it's always nice to come together and find um, opportunities to collaborate. So there are situations where it could be mutually beneficial. So um, I'd say uh, benefiting from each other's expertise. Um, institutions can provide access to facilities that DIY scientists don't otherwise have access to. Um, grassroots can provide access to specific context-dependent experience to um, community innovation, which is, can be much more agile than the kind of innovation you can achieve inside an institution, and the wider geographical reach. Um, and there would also be the potential to uh, jointly apply for funding, as there aren't very many funding sources that are available to grassroots projects. Um, secondly, secondly, I would say, um, it's important to realise how different institutions and grassroots projects are. There's definitely a power imbalance. So institutions um, can launch projects with relatively lower risk. 
they, those who are applying for funding are supported to do so, so they, they can use their paid time, um, the institutional reputation and connections, um, often they have in-house advice on grant writing, uh, legal issues, financial issues, um, and people who work for institutions are able to do their citizen science work on their own work time. So they can cover the cost of registration fees for conferences and travel expenses. Um, but on the other hand, they move slowly, uh, they have large overheads to cover, and they don't um, have access to the same communities and the knowledge and experience of grassroots projects, grassroots communities. On the other hand, grassroots projects are typically volunteer run or underfunded. Um, there are far fewer run funding resources available to um, to grassroots projects, especially if the organisation is not managed to attain legal status, which can be a big administrative hurdle for a grassroots project. Um, and applying with funding comes with much greater risk. Um, together with regulatory hurdles, um, it, the scope of grassroots projects can be really limited. Um, the scope of what they're able to achieve can be very limited. Um, however, on the plus side, they have lower costs, fewer overheads. Um, their motivation is much more intrinsic, so we're talking about passion rather than this desperate need to publish or perish. Um, and with um, increasing open science and the high number of young scientists who are exiting academia, um, and also the, the potential for really natural interdisciplinarity that we have in grassroots projects, um, they can be really full of expertise. So the third big issue um, is the lack of understanding. So it's important to remember that as grassroots projects are often volunteer run, you need to address the fact that they're not paid to take part in joint projects, unlike institutional partners. Um, they can't attend meetings during working hours um, and they need a very good reason uh, to take part if they're going to give up their spare time. Um, they don't have access to the kind of resources to pay for travel expenses and high registration fees for conferences. So these are very simple, basic issues, but if they're not addressed, then you may still get some grassroots projects to take part, but um, you'll be selecting for those that have managed to get over that hurdle and achieve um, some level of independence and uh, funding. Um, but you will be missing out on the reality of most of the grassroots projects, um, which is not inclusive and the most marginalised projects will never be able to take part. So if you combine that with the domination of citizen science by institutional projects in terms of policy, in terms of access to funding, um, in terms of professional development and conferences, then um, the potential relationship between grassroots and institutions and the trust um, has already been rather damaged. So it's going to be a question of rebuilding that trust and creating the right opportunities for grassroots and institutions to collaborate. But the benefits will definitely be worth it.